Good evening and welcome to the Seamless Trading Group. This is our stock market wrap up for Thursday, November 19th. Our website is blog.ascendertrader.com where we put together video technical analysis trading plans on a daily basis. That's right, we believe in a trading plan. We believe in focus and being disciplined and being aware that what's going on in the market that could affect your trades. Whether you're a day trade or position trade, swing trade, you need to know what's going on in the market that can move your position one way or the other. And being focused and disciplined cuts down on our research time and we have time to spend with our family. So the day that was, well, the market rebounded. I'm sorry, the dollar rebounded. Why? Yeah, you never know. I mean, we're, we're at 52 week lows, so certainly uh, the dollar can't keep going lower. But one thing that has to understand that we've known for a while is that a weak dollar equals more jobs equals a good uh, stock market. Um, but remember, we actually had okay news today. Jobless claims met expectations. Leading indicators met expectations. Philly Fed was above expectations. But the market still sold off basically right at open. And again, that was due to the rally in the dollar. None of our, our markets ended in a positive uh, territory. We had some uh, testimony from uh, Geithner talking about reform, uh, some, you know, news out there about healthcare. But overall, the market sold off in, in the first 15 minutes there, uh, 100 points, over 100 points, and then kind of went to the side. And then we had what we've seen all this week, which is the end of the day rally into the close. So the Dow down almost 100. But remember, we were down 140. <laughs> um, S&P down, NASDAQ down. So the rally was good, but keep in mind that we were, we were lower. Uh, Sears did beat, but really what that was is they didn't lose as much money as expected. They still lost money, but just not as much as expected. expected. And Dell didn't miss after the close today. So that certainly dampens a little bit. Me, that's a coal energy stock. As it's colder, you know, me, BTU, uh, which is Peabody, um, uh, these companies should be doing well as we get into the colder months. And we had another downgrade on Amazon. So tomorrow, what do we have? Nothing. <laughs> so once again, we'll have the true sentiment of the traders, but we also will have the movement of the dollar to affect our trades. So we're going to take our market snapshot with our website, FinViz. And you know, um, I'm a visual person, so maybe that's why I like to suck. But you can see again, what we had was the market right at open, sold right on off. And then we basically consolidated for the whole day. And then right around 3 o'clock, specifically 3.30, right here at the end, we had this last little push that really kind of saved us from being down 100. But you know, again, when we really look at where we were, we were down big. And again, I love this visual where you can see, now you can really see it. Look at all that red. This was definitely a down day. Now, some stocks, look at Walmart. Some stocks in here did uh, actually make their way to being positive today. Uh, but just a quick visual of showing what the market is. And you can see our new high, advancing decline. You can see the new high, new lows. All these are showing that it was a weak day. Switching over to our daily charts, we can see Again, our lovely uptrend on the uh, Dow Jones. And although we did have a nice pullback, you can kind of visually see, let me just blow that back up. You can see where did we stop? The 10 moving average. It's like yesterday we came down to the 5 moving average. Today we came down to the 10 moving average and rebounded from there. That's why, it's, again, it's important that even on the intraday basis, taking the time to go back and looking at the longer time frames to see if any key support or resistance le levels are coming up. Sorry, that was my dad calling. <laughs> uh, switching over to the NASDAQ, we see it's a little bit more drastic because we actually have the gap down here. Now, the NASDAQ will show gaps more than the S&P and the, uh, uh, the Dow, but we have a gap down, and the uh, NASDAQ actually came all the way down to the 20 moving average and kind of rebounded from there. Um, and look at the volume, uh, getting back at least to the average line. So we did have an increase in volume. So two days, two down days, two pickups in volume. Switching over to S&P 500. Not the immediate bounce. We kind of air kissed the 20. Uh, the volume, not big of an increase today compared to yesterday, but it's up a little bit. 
and we're basically back down into the into the range. Remember, we were saying 1100 was a breakout. Well, now we're back in that. So we need to see if we're going to really get a good bounce off the 20, or if we're going to uh, go back up. Nasdaq. I just want to see going back. You see, here we are in the Nasdaq, definitely back in the range. And the Dow, which has been leading us in November, uh, we'll see what it does from here. We are going to finally come down and test the 20 moving average again. A move up. Remember, what is our our catalyst? Remember, that's always our question. Uh, one of the things that uh, in the trading room in talks about is uh, panic, and you know, again, what's going to be our catalyst for the Dow to finally break the 50 moving average? You can see we're kind of air kissing it right here. What's going to be the catalyst? Tomorrow we've got no news. You know, one of the things that's funny is yesterday I said, oh yeah, you know, negative 800 is bad, but it's not 3,000 bad. Ta-da! Today, 3,000 bad. So, uh, certainly not good. And look at that breath. I mean, remember I said yesterday, but well, we got a hint of negative breath. And then today we've got firm negative breath, a little increase in volume. So that does give us some sentiment of whether or not the market wants to uh, continue this down move. Now, it's not above average. It's more than normal what we've had the last November here, but it is not tremendous volume. But um, definitely uh, the the internals are saying that the we may want to go down tomorrow, especially with there not being any um, catalyst as far as news. Some traders may make tomorrow their last day when it close out their positions and not even worry about next week's holiday trading. And uh, even though it's option expiration and we know we may get an end of the day rally just to kind of close things and make it look pretty, but what's going to be a catalyst tomorrow? The main thing to see here on our intraday look is that obviously we sold right off at the open. And when you're getting a 100 point push down like this, you're not looking to uh, buy the lows. You're looking to sell the rallies. Um, uh, so even if you do get some failed new lows, that's not the time. And even though you probably would have worked out, you would have taken some heat and definitely would have felt a little pain here. So once we came down, pushed, and pushed again, now you can start looking for some new uh, counter trend plays. But again, keep in mind, it's a 100-point uh, day. Counter trend plays are not necessarily the best thing to be looking at on a 100-point day. Th that being said, I did one. <laughs> and finally, we'll come over here. You can see the power of the pivots. Let the pivots control you. Um, and then probably the, the running out of stops here. I did catch a little of this here. Uh, but overall, um, I'll talk more about that when we get to our futures trading room. As we close with the educational portion of our video, we're talking about random outcomes and consistent results, the comparison of a professional trader and a gambler. And yesterday specifically, we talked about that one of the things that gives us an edge as traders are patterns, chart patterns, uh, technical indicators, um, you know, the way we do our technical analysis, all those things are become recognizable patterns and variables that we can use to give us an edge, to give us an opportunity to buy low or sell high, to put us in the position of uh, being successful. Now what's important is to have a trading plan that defines your edge so that when you see it, you act upon it, not when you're just guessing, you're in a room. I um, Follow my videos, yes. Being in a chat room, yes. But you still gotta be able to take the advice of a video, take the advice of a chat room and apply it to what you know in your trading plan and make your own educated decisions. Just following me, just following Alex will not make you a successful trader, it makes you a successful follower. Because in the end, anything can happen and since as we talked about yesterday, um, those people that are in the trade at $100 last year are not there now. Different traders means we may get the same outcome, we may not. As I just said, both an intraday setup and right now, I just talked about Alex, that is our futures trading room. They got a great Tyndale Triaxis. Make sure you put in a Sendo as your reference and make sure you say hi to me and come in there. I mean, we're making money. All, I, it's just amazing the, uh, as I switched over to futures and was looking for a room, I cannot speak highly, more highly of this room and the consistency, both for big traders and small time traders, especially for small time traders, he's got a great plan for you. And again, if you're going to get into futures, you got to come to our link here. Intraday uh, e mini margins as low as $300. There's that leverage and 23 contracts if you join through us. 
And our day trading ebook uh, gives you the great routines that you need pre market, after market, and during the market to be a successful trader. Hopefully, I'll get to see you guys on Sunday for our Jumpstart Trading Session. Spend five good minutes at our YouTube channel to learn about trading futures. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Trade at your own risk.